Hello there, and welcome to the video teleconferencing quick training. The first thing that you need, as you'll notice down here, I have the video desktop client installed. Call OCIO and ask them for a video account, which will be the same username and password that you use to log into your computer. You will then go to vidyo.si.edu. I would recommend that you bookmark it. Hit enter, and it takes you to the portal. You will punch in your regular SI username and your SI password. Now, it notices that my video desktop is not running. If you're opening this for the first time, you'll have to install the client. I left mine not running just to show you what happens when you use it for the first time. But I will now start my video desktop plugin and refresh the screen and log in again. You'll notice over here I've added people to my contacts list. Yours will probably have nothing until you add them. If you're setting up a meeting, this web browser window is where you're going to control the meeting. So you want to click Control Meeting and you want to join your own room. The first window that pops up is your configuration window and you'll see me wearing a headset, which is very important because over here you see echo cancellation and auto adjust microphone level and it just does not work as well as having people wear headsets or the other option is if you're in a conference room they make a speakerphone microphone device that does the echo cancellation and microphone levels automatically for you if you're wearing a headset like i am this is the name of the headset for the speakers this is the record device, which is this microphone. I check those. The camera is my Logitech camera, which is probably the same one that you'll have. Click save and you're good to go. Just remember in here under devices, select your earphones, your microphone and the camera. It'll most likely find the camera for you and automatically select it. If you have two, if you're on a laptop and you have an additional camera, you can choose it there. Make sure that you're wearing headphones and these two boxes are unchecked. And click save. I am now sitting alone in my own room. Along the top, you have the option to choose how many windows that you will see. So if you only have one person who's participating, you can select that one person. Your best bet is to leave it on automatic because then as people call in or join, their windows will just pop up and this window will just get bigger. The next window is the full screen. When you click it, everything becomes full screen. You'll notice that the menu bar just disappeared. I have to go up here and click to get it to reappear, or I can go to my settings, options. On the PC version, there is an option to always show the menu bar. I would check it. And the other thing that I would also check is this auto start button. If this checkbox is checked, every time you boot your machine, that little plugin will be running. This show participant names is how my name is showing up on the bottom. And then everyone that calls in, whatever name they punch in, will appear on the bottom of the screen down here. I'm going to go out of full screen mode so you can see everything that's going on. The next window is your sharing window. So if you would like to share a document. So I now have on another screen up above your head, a document open that I would like to review with you. So I will select that document right here. It is in the program called Pages. The document is called Untitled. When I select it, it is now being broadcast. In order for me to see that document and make sure it is broadcast, that is the toggle window. So now from here, if I select myself, that means I am selecting what I am broadcasting to everyone else and my document appears. 
I can then go full screen and you can see that the document is very clear and very legible. If I go up to my document and scroll through it, it will also scroll as well. If I close that window, the document disappears. The next button, if you click on the speaker, will mute the volume coming out so you won't hear whoever you're talking to. It's red. Check it again and you can see it. The little arrow down gives you a slider for the volume coming out. Then obviously the next one is the microphone. If you want to mute the room so no one in your room can hear you, check it. Now no one can hear you. Same thing. You also have a volume slider, but it's not going to work until I unmute it. So I can adjust the level of my microphone. You can see it's going up and down with my voice, so that means it's working. If the person on the other end can't hear you and this is going up and down, the problem is on their end. That being the most difficult part of video conferencing is the fact that you cannot control what the person does on the other end. The next one is your camera privacy, which locks out your camera. You'll still see yourself, but no one else will see you. Click it again and you reappear. So this video here of my head is my local video. And the one that's a little softer is the one that is going out to the internet and coming back to me. And then this little gear are your settings. Again, I'm on a Mac, so they're slightly different, but mostly the same. The important window being your devices window, where you select your output or playback device, which is your speakers and what you are hearing, your record device, which is your microphone, which is what you're broadcasting, and your camera. Apply, save, it goes away. So you have a meeting. <clears throat> you're sitting alone in your room. You've played with everything. You've got everything all set, and now you want to invite people. So you have two options. If you're in a conference room, most likely the email is not going to be set up for you. It's going to be blank. So what you're going to have to do is click the room links. This link here always remains the same for your room. So this link right here is my personal video room that is linked to my account. Okay. I can change it if I so choose. But I like to leave it the same because I just go through my email, I look up one of the past if I want to set up a meeting, and I just forward some in that same email that gets created. So what I will show you next is that email. So I'm at my desk, so my email is set to myself. So I click the invite by email. It opens up my email window and creates this. Please join my meeting by clicking this link. This will be an active link that they just click on and it brings them right to the video portal. Login with your username. There is a PDF guide and there are some videos that they can also watch. Up here you just add the name of the people that you would like to invite and click send. If there were people in the room and this is your room because you have an account, you can kick people out with the disconnect button. You can mute them, which is very important because problem is you have a laptop. It has a speaker on top, a microphone on top, and speakers right underneath it. So the sound comes out and goes in the microphone and comes in and goes out, and that is, that's feedback, and you don't want it. So the best thing for you to do is mute everyone that joins unless they want to talk, if they aren't wearing a headset. If they're on a laptop, they can take a pair of regular headphones, plug them in. That breaks the loop. They just need to not have the sound coming out of the laptop go back into the laptop, or the speakers on their computer go back into the microphone that's on the camera. You can close their video and block them out. So for instance, the way that these screens would behave if I had, you know, let's say I had three other people on the side and everyone was talking, 
it will make the biggest, the largest window. If you have one large window, you can do like a Brady Bunch style where there's one big window and then there's, you know, three other people over here. It tries to switch based on who's talking, which if someone is sitting at their desk and they have they're drinking coffee and they set down their coffee mug and it makes a noise, it's going to switch to that person. So you can close everyone else's video except for the one person that is talking. You can add participants, connect all, disconnect all. I know disconnect will kick everyone out of the room. So then I could add everyone to the room. This only applies to people with accounts will show up in here. Add participants. Type in River, click on her, hit connect. Hey, welcome to my training video. So with the self view, I can just look at my participant who is attentively eating her lunch. I can put myself picture in picture in the bottom corner. And I can look at both of our beautiful faces at the same time. Over in my window, as I said before, I can mute her if her audio is not behaving. But because Meg has been trained, Meg's audio is behaving, so we can allow her to talk when her microphone is green. So Meg is now sharing her Outlook inbox with me. And if I go to full screen, you can see that I'm clear, she's clear, and you can read the text in her email document. She is no longer sharing it because there must be something in it she doesn't want everyone to read. And as we can plainly see, Meg is now listening to Pandora at work, hogging up network resources, causing your video call to be blurry. Whatever you're doing now, it's going to show. So you're sharing your Internet Explorer, so it's going to show whatever you click on. So if you click on your Facebook, you know, because you're sharing that. Yeah, now I see your Yelp Zest Bistro page. So we are setting up a genome conference lunch. So we decided to have that at Zest Bistro. Hello, Meg. Welcome to my video conference room. And also notice that it shows Meg Rivers underneath her because of the show participants name checkbox. And it also shows her name under the document that she is sharing. If you have multiple people sharing multiple documents, you would choose them up here. So if there was someone named Dave Thomas sharing a document about Wendy's cheeseburgers, it would say Dave Thomas. You would select his name and it would show Dave Thomas's document. As you can see, Meg and I are currently discussing the hyperbolic crochet coral reef project. And she is sharing these hyperbolically crocheted coral products with me currently. If I go up here, I can unview her document by unchecking it. If I want to see it again, I click the sharing window, choose her name, and momentarily her document will pop up the different views again one more time so i can just see meg and her document i can put myself in the bottom corner and see meg and her document i can put myself under meg and her document to the right auto zero if i select zero i just see the document. And then if I toggle through, I see myself in the corner so I can see what I'm broadcasting and the document. If I click it again, I see myself and the document and just the document. So if I go back to auto, there's Meg. There's me in the bottom corner, Meg and her document. And Meg and I, Brady Bunch style above each other and the document large. Thank you, Meg. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Roger. You too. Later. Bye. Bye. And Meg disappears. And I'm back by myself in my room, which is still available. And anyone that 
has the link to my room can join in. After you, as a registered user, create your room and send out your emails to your guests, they will click that link and they will see this window. They should log in as guests, unless they are registered users, which they probably aren't. They should put their name in the guest window and click join. If they do not have the video plugin installed, it will ask them to install it and they should install it. However, with that said, if they are in a government environment like ours, you should let them know ahead of time so they can have their IT person come and install it for them. So that's it. When you're done, close this window and you're all set. Thank you very much for watching and good luck.